Backfield with Shea Patterson. And he'll hand it to him straight ahead. Crosses the line. RPO inside zone here with an incorrect read. Two options here are this handoff to Charbonnet, which Shea Pedersen does. The other option here is the slant from Tariq Black. Counting the blockers from Michigan, you have seven here to account for seven Army players in the box. You can see the conflict player is already making his move. He's coming up towards the line of scrimmage. This is the player Patterson is reading to determine whether or not to throw to this slant. If he runs up, the throw should be there. If he falls back, then the run, uh, you know, you have seven on seven. There should be uh, feasibly an advantage with the run game, given this guy doesn't uh, crash in. This guy, I think, also complicates the read a little bit. Uh, probably not, but something I'll address here in a bit. So you can see number seven, the conflict player right here. Uh, he is screaming upfield. You can see Patterson's eyes the entire way uh, are on this conflict player. He's now at the line of scrimmage, so that opens up this slant area. This guy could kind of come into sort of the read, but I think Patterson's eyes are squarely on number seven here. Uh, but, you know, regardless, Treat Black is opened up by this guy vacating this area. These linebackers are not... Uh, a factor here on the throw regardless uh, he hands the ball off blocking wise one main issue here that kind of blows up this play uh, play side you actually have good blocks so you have Ruiz and when you're doing a good job actually getting to this linebacker as well front side is all fine um, back side here this is the issue you got McCune here trying to cut off 31 who's slanting inside he doesn't get any leverage uh this guy is able to slant inside uh he really breaks down the play and gets in Hayes's hip as well so both of these guys are blown up on the block that cuts Charbonnet off from over here and he has to cut back so uh that guy slanting inside you'd like to see McCune do a better job getting leverage there uh, you saw that Charbonnet, instead of over here utilizing all these blocks, he has to run back into traffic, results in only one yard pickup. So wrong read for sure. All right, real quick before we get into this, this is an RPO uh, power play kind of. One option is to Charbonnet kind of across the formation here. The other is to Tariq Black on the slant. Michigan's got seven here on the line to block uh, the original six here in the box for Army. So that leaves this outside uh, kind of rover type guy as the read. Obviously, if he comes up, you uh, pass it. If he stays, you give. Um, interesting thing, he's going to come down pre-snap. Watch the eyes of McCaffrey on this guy. You can see he will uh, recognize that he's coming. Keep it going. All right, Dylan McC that now he's in the box. So that kind of shifts the read from this guy to this guy. And uh, similarly, watch McCaffrey's eyes on this middle linebacker uh, through this play. McCaffrey. Comes in at quarterback now. He throws. So this guy coming down uh, changes the pre-snap read, I think. So he's he's going all the way to throw. He's just making sure that this middle linebacker doesn't creep back into uh, this passing lane uh, that Tariq Black is going to be on. Um, he doesn't really even get into the mesh with Charbonnet here. All the way he's reading that middle linebacker, making sure he's not dropping back. Uh, but you see he, he's committed to the pass. I think he waits... Um, a little bit too long, and he actually shuffles a bit instead of planting. Um, so I think he should stop, you know, quick mesh and then throw. Um, but he waits too long, and that leaves enough time for this cornerback uh, to come up and make a play. So for the blocking, they actually do a pretty good job. The play side here is all caving down while you have uh, Bredesen and when you pulling through the hole here. Uh, again, it's 7 uh, versus six so they have the numbers here to run this play and this lane does kind of form uh, with and when you having a, a space here through the hole um, but it's a throw which is the correct read um, you have number seven here who makes a play on the late throw uh, that is also too far in front of Treat Black who Treat Black also kind of stops running his route a little bit so combination of things that make this unsuccessful and kind of a scary play but it is the correct read sensational day second down and four Charbonnet first down RPO inside zone here, good hard running from Charbonnet. So it's a little bit weird here. So you have the inside zone option here for Charbonnet, as well as the slant option from Treat Black. 
Uh, you have seven, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six here for Michigan. And it's a little confusing on which the six that Michigan are accounting for. Uh, I think it's only these five. They're not accounting for this guy. Maybe he was also uh, someone to be picked up, but he is blitzing off the edge, so he will not be blocked. So you only have five people that will actually get blocked. That leaves this uh, kind of outside linebacker, weak side linebacker as uh, the read guy, you can see the eyes for Patterson will start to get to him. So, again, if he falls back, you hand it off. If he uh, comes up, uh, there's a passing lane that opens. You'd expect Tariq Black to get to the inside of this gentleman. So, uh, the issue here is this weak side linebacker is the first guy who makes contact here. We'll get to that. So, uh, he's reading him all the way, right? It looks like he's he's reading this weak side linebacker. He's kind of sitting there. Uh, it's, a, it's a longer route than a general uh, other plays here so while he's reading him I think it's a correct read uh, and also with this blitzing guy I'm not going to ding Patterson for handing the ball off because he might get thumped by that guy so I'm going to say debatable probably correct um, the blocking is overall pretty good you got one and one block from uh, Hayes here he does fine Brayson's going to shuffle before reaching out to this uh, linebacker right here Ruiz and when you double this guy uh, to Mars and then you have one-on-one -on -one blocks here they both do well uh, good job by Charbonnet to avoid the blitzer and then uh, utilize this big double and plow through this uh, re reading uh, weak side linebacker uh, it plows through Oops, sorry he plows through him for an additional four yards pick up the first down so dodges the blocker plows through him you see that uh this guy that on when you and Ruiz we're pushing is planted at the marker, and Charbonnet goes over for the first down. So, debatable read. Uh, good job otherwise. The people's Jones, maybe their best receiver who has a foot injury. Charbonnet doubled up. RPO inside zone eats an army blitz. So your one option here is Charbonnet, or you have Eubanks coming across on this slant route. Uh, technically, you have quite a few more people in the box than Michigan is blockers. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six here for Michigan. And then you have, that's supposed to be a six. And then you have, uh, I think these are the six that Michigan's accounting for with those six blockers. I think they know that this guy has to come out for some sort of pass responsibility. Uh, so they're not accounting for him. And this is the X factor, right? This is the guy that Patterson needs to read to determine whether to give or to pass. He's occupying the space in the passing lane. Uh, if he stays out here, if he comes up for the run, that gives you an advantage with Eubanks' route. So he actually goes out into pass coverage, so that's why uh, we see Patterson here. Um, you know, it's a pretty easy read. The, the shoulders for this guy are squarely in pass coverage uh, at the time of this mesh point. He will actually overrun this, and Eubanks will come open, but it is still the correct read. Uh, nothing wrong with the read on the give there. The issue with the play is that this linebacker is going to blow some shit up with coming through the exact gap that we're trying to uh, build here. You could argue Hayes should be picking this up. He is helping Collins on this block on the defensive end. Uh, another issue here is that Ruiz is going to pick up this defensive tackle uh, with Bredesen before releasing out to nobody. So Ruiz uh, is kind of useless here. Bredesen notices, you know, he's alone on this defensive tackle, notices this linebacker. He releases this tackle uh, for this blitzing linebacker and picks him up. But uh, Ruiz is already gone, so there's no one to help on that defensive tackle. As a result, Charbonnet cuts from this blitzing linebacker straight into this mess, and you have a lineman downfield doing nothing. Other guys do fine, but it's irrelevant to this play. So it's blown up for a uh, about a yard loss here, or zero gain. First down to the 49 for Michigan. Charbonnet again. Inside zone read, Charbonnet dropped for a loss here. Uh, the options here, it's debatable if this is a read. I think it's a debatable result as well. So you got Charbonnet uh, on one option here, and then you have Patterson keeping around to the outside. Those are your options. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blockers here for Michigan on the line. Um, the guys Michigan's accounting for, one, two, three, four, five, six 
So these are the six in the box that Michigan is accounting for through blocking with those seven. That leaves this guy as the read uh, guy, as well as this linebacker will come into play as an additional read because he is coming on the scrape exchange. So really, if he removes himself from the situation, it should be seven on five if you eliminate him from the read since he's becoming a part of this sort of zone read. Um, so that's why I'm saying it's debatable. I think by the action of these guys, obviously he's crashing really hard, and this guy is as well. They're both going pretty hard this way. You could argue there's room for Patterson on the outside, so that's probably why I would risk it. Um, but you can see why he would give the ball here. Technically, it is a give read because of this scrape exchange, but they're coming so hard even on the scrape exchange that there could be a path for Patterson out there and beat this linebacker. Um, blocking is, is all okay, except for Ruiz. Ruiz snaps the ball, goes pick up this def defensive tackle, and he ends up a couple of yards in the backfield. That forces Charbonnet, instead of flowing to this uh, sort of blocking, is heading towards this C gap here. Um, since Ruiz is backed up here, he has to cut up a lot sooner, and that allows the scrape exchange uh, players that are screaming down the line to make the play on the tackle. So Ruiz can't get blown into the backfield like this. You see Charbonnet's path was more here, and now it has to cut straight up, and that's right into the teeth of these two gents who make the tackle right at the line of scrimmage, actually a yard loss. So debatably, wrong read. 30 for Michigan after the 18-yard pickup. And kind of an arc read power play, pretty interesting. Look here, you got Ronnie Bell on the motion. He's going to become an arc block here. Uh, the read is, uh, or I guess one option is Charbonnet up the middle. Otherwise, Patterson could keep to the outside. Uh, looking at the numbers for Michigan, you have one, two, three, four, five, six guys blocking here. For Army, you're looking at one, two, three, four, five immediately here in the box. So you have a numbers advantage. And Michigan is reading this end. If he stays home, hand it off. If he uh, comes down the line, you can keep it with Ronnie Bell on the outside for any flowing uh, linebackers coming uh, as well. So uh, it's the correct read here given this uh, defensive end, kind of stand-in end, is shifting to the outside. He's shuffling, staying home. So it's the right read for Patterson. Uh, the blocking's pretty interesting on this play. So you have two... And first, before I get to that, Army is doing a nice little stunt here to confuse the front side of this. You're running this little stunt between these two defensive uh, defensive end, defensive tackle. This guy's blitzing, so he's going to take himself out of the play. Uh, so really take a look at these three guys mainly. I'll point out the backside first here as we go. So uh, you got a pulling Bredesen here and uh, McCune as well leading through the hole. Backside, you got a Wenyu. And Ruiz do a really good job here. You got Hayes filling this gap left by Bredesen. Uh, they all are fine over here. They account for these two gentlemen. Um, this stunt is in the middle of happening. You have Mayfield one-on-one -on -one here. He's going to lose leverage on this guy, and he needs help from Bredesen on this one guy. So that's two blockers on one guy. And then you're going to have McCune come in. He actually thumps this linebacker really well. But the result is this guy is going to be free and stick his nose in the hole to meet Charbonnet, and that's what blows up the play. So uh, Mayfield needs to be doing a better job to allow Bredesen to pick up this defender. Good job by McCune here to thump this guy. But correct read, uh, a little bit mis-execution on the front side, but that's affected by the stunt. Charbonnet, 16 carries, 66 yards, and a touchdown. That one. RPO to the flats here to Eubanks that Patterson just straight up misses on. So uh, the RPO action here is either this inside zone run uh, to Charbonnet, or you have this flat route uh, out of Eubanks. You have outside receiver here running a similar slant, but this is really where the action is headed to. Um, Michigan has one, two, three, four, five, six blockers in here to account for the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the boundary player conflict player here is this uh, guy standing up on the end. So if he kind of follows Eubanks, you got six on six here for blocking. If he either comes up field or uh, shuffles down, 
that's going to leave this route open for Eubanks. Um, you'll see that he does uh, come up field pretty aggressively, so that's why it's a very quick read from Patterson. You can see both him and actually it's a scrape exchange. So this endmost guy is here, and then you have this outside linebacker who's uh, shooting upfield as well. So it's uh, a definite throw. No one is is out here. You you will have the safety flying up that probably would have limited the gain on this, uh, but it's a good decision for Patterson to decide, you know what, I'm getting out of this mesh point. I'm throwing the ball right away. Um, really, blocking doesn't matter too much. If he would have handed it off, uh, you know, you could see uh, Charbonnet either going here or here. It's relatively well blocked. Mayfield doesn't get to this uh, linebacker too smoothly, but, um, you know, with a, a lower throw here, you could – kind of see uh, him possibly missing the safety, but it all depends on how the safety does. Uh, you'd be looking at probably a, a touchdown if he can make the safety miss. But throw is too high. The Giants with the sixth overall pick. I mean, I was, I was surprised at the time. Um. Inside zone read here for Michigan. Uh, the action here is either a handoff to Charbonnet, which does happen, or a run to the outside. You also kind of have this weird little uh, fake screen action to try to suck up the uh, defenders here instead of focusing on Patterson. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six for Michigan here to block. One, two, three, four, five, and then kind of six. This guy is an overhang safety, so he's not really accounted for. So six versus five. Uh, numbers advantage here. This is your conflict player, the read area that Patterson is keeping an eye on. Uh, again, if he comes upfield uh, or screams inside, it's a keep. If he stays home, it's a give. Uh, you'll see that he does stay home. It's a give. You could mark this as debatable. His first initial move is to the outside here before shuffling back inside. I think uh, it would be difficult for Patterson to get to the outside of him, so I'm absolutely fine with the give here. Blocking, uh, let's first look at the stunt here provided by Army on the play side. This really throws Bredesen and Hayes off on the left side here, as well as this blitzing linebacker gives fits for Mayfield, so not the greatest here. Move forward here. So you can see Mayfield getting rocked into the backfield. This guy's going to come down the line and force Charbonnet off of his path back into the flowing defensive end here. And then play side, you have this stunt where uh, this guy comes this way and then loop around. 52 is the looper. Uh, Hayes is completely out of position here. Uh, Bredesen has to deal with this guy. That leaves 52 right here again, which forces Charbonnet back backside to the defensive end that was red and uh they both make a play for zero yards so correct read missed execution on a couple fronts yeah. quick throw underneath and caught ronnie bell again rpo slant here to ronnie bell on a nice pickup action for michigan this inside zone option here for charbonnet and then you have, obviously, this slant here from Ronnie Bell that is executed upon. You have one, two, three, four, five, six blockers in for Michigan right here compared to one, two, three, four, five, six. So six on six. Uh, that leaves um, this kind of rover safety guy as the read uh, conflict player for Patterson. Since he's coming up in a blitz, you'll also see that I think Patterson is checking this guy as well to ensure he is not dropping back into this zone. But again, it holds true if these guys are in pass coverage. Uh, it's more of an area than one singular guy. So as this guy comes up on blitz, you have to check this area as well. If they fall back into this zone, that takes away the pass option and you give. If they come flying up, which they do, uh, it opens up this slant. So let's move forward and analyze their actions here. So obviously both linebackers are coming up pretty quickly. This guy on the edge, this guy is reacting this way. That opens up this that opens up this lane here uh, for Ronnie Bell in the pass. Um, this mesh point is accelerated by Patterson uh, because he's reading pass right away. No need to linger, throw it right out of the break. So it's well-timed on the pass. 
a couple things blocking here real quick. Uh, they're running this little stunt again on the what would be play side for the run and the left side of Michigan's offensive line. Bredesen and Hayes pick this up appropriately. Uh, it does look well blocked this time. Um, you have tight end coming through the hole to pick up this guy. Uh, you have Unwainu, I think, who would be here to pick up the uh, stunting guy here, play side. So you would have more of a hole for Charbonnet, but it is the correct read to throw. Well-timed, well-executed first down for Michigan there. But but it is a good point because it does happen very fast. On second down and eight, Charbonnet. Split zone read that I believe has an option for uh, Patterson to keep here. Um, essentially, you have the split zone here, so this is Charbonnet's path. Patterson could potentially keep on the outside with uh, Tariq Black throwing a block on the Actually, it'd be more here on the linebacker backside if possible. Uh, it doesn't come to that, but um, I believe there's an option here for the read. Um, taking a look real quick at the uh, numbers on either side, Michigan has these eight bodies for blocking, so that's quite a bit. And then the box for blockers for Michigan to account for. This is seven guys. That leaves this guy as the read option as well this linebacker will come into kind of this read zone again it's his own not just one guy on the scrape exchange he never actually gets to the outside um, but this guy will kind of sit here a little bit as well as this guy coming so I believe it's the correct read you know 43 isn't really a threat for this run play here sure maybe backside but there's just a wall of bodies here so not the worst thing to give especially with uh you know this guy creeping into the read space for patterson as well so i think it's a correct give here uh let's look at the blocking two main blocks uh that are big for this play mayfield play side gets a really good kick here and when you sets the left side of this hole that really gives charbonnet a good gap to block here uh, if Collins can get any sort of block on this overhang linebacker, it's a huge play. Unfortunately, he does not. So at the time of the uh, hole here, you got a regap here for Charbonnet. He hits it quick. Wall of bodies, slight gap here. Uh, you need Collins to get a block here. If he does, you can see this lane kind of forming to the outside. Unfortunately, Collins does not pick anyone up, and that guy makes the tackle. So big ding on Collins here, but correct read. You get five out of it. 44. Patterson gives it to his... RPO inside zone here for a first down. Again, the uh, option here is either a give to Charbonnet or you have this interesting route combo. Uh, Tariq Black is coming on the slant. You also have a slant on the outside. And Ronnie Bell runs this kind of flat bubble sort of route here. Um, but this is really the route that we're interested in on the option here. Uh, looking at numbers. So you have six blockers, six linemen here, including McCune at the top of your screen uh, to account for these five army defenders. That leaves this guy who's sitting right here on this slant route uh, on Tariq Black. He's the read. If he comes up, you throw. If he sits in this area, uh, you give. He sits just long enough on this uh, to warrant a give. Um, so it is the correct read here to give to Charbonnet. Um, you know, I don't think it's debatable at all. Um, look at the blocking. Two main blocks that really set this play up. Uh, Mayfield is going to kill a guy here that uh, sets the left side of this hole. Good uh, block from McCune to set the right side on this defensive end. So really nice job. That leaves plenty of room here. Uh, Charbonnet does a good job to initially bounce this way and then cut back to uh, maximize his distance between this weak side linebacker and himself. He gets to the first down marker. Um, everyone else is fine in their blocks, not really relevant, but really good job by McCune, especially and Mayfield for just absolutely planting that guy. Creates enough space for Charbonnet for four yards and a first down. Charbonnet, you got to hold on to the ball. First down, Charbonnet runs left this time. Outside zone read is Charbonnet here. Michigan actually has quite a big advantage here. So uh, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here for Michigan. You have the five here in the box that Michigan's blocking. 
uh, that leaves this as the conflict guy uh, that Patterson is currently looking at right now. The uh, options for the run here are either Charbonnet out to the outside here or Patterson keep here. Um, so that's who the read is between. Uh, let's look at kind of how the read goes. That conflict player stays on the edge here, so it looks to be the correct read. Not really an option for Patterson to keep here. I don't like that one-on-one -on -one matchup. Uh, the blocks that really stand out here, um, I'll just kind of go through a little bit of them. you got Eubanks here. Uh, you're going to have uh, a double in this defensive end between Hayes and McCune. Um, you're going to have Bradison kind of working down the line and similar kind of action out of, um, out of and when you here, and then you just have some backside blocks. So let's look at the front side, mainly looking at McCune, uh, on this double here. So he's working with Hayes. McCune's going to get off, uh, towards this linebacker and Bradison, you can see he's kind of helping, uh, extend this play, kind of create this backside wall initially. Um, here you have McCune falling off for this linebacker as, uh, Eubanks is getting this um, the safety coming up. So uh, this linebacker has outside leverage, and now you have Bradison trying to help out here. He doesn't pick it up, so uh, you know a bit of a rough job by McCune and Bradison here. Neither of them pick him up. You also have this corner coming up, f flying up to make the play. So between him <clears throat> and this outside linebacker, uh, they make the play. So just kind of a weird play, but correct read. <laughs> Charbonnet, Charbonnet will... Arc inside zone here for a yard from Charbonnet. Michigan has eight blocking here. Could count nine, but that isn't really addressing the box. In the box, technically, you have uh, these eight as well. So how do you get the advantage? Uh, you read this guy. This is the main uh, zone area. There will be ex a scrape exchange from this linebacker who gets into this area. So these are both technically guys who are red on the play, but this is the initial uh, read key here for uh, McCaffrey. Uh, the options for the run are either give to Charbonnet up the middle here on the inside zone or a keep around the outside for McCaffrey with Eubanks coming across for an arc block here. So that's kind of all of the action we're seeing here. See the eyes for McCaffrey go straight to 43 on the edge. He commits all the way for the run here, right? Like he is just rushing this way. Then you have this scrape exchange guy, right? So this scrape exchange uh, makes this a correct read to Charbonnet up the middle despite 43's action down the line. So if that scrape exchange wasn't there, it would be the wrong read. Given the scrape exchange, it is the correct read for a give. Um, looking at the blocking here, first thing that you just have to watch is Bredesen just absolutely murdering this guy. He plants him two yards downfield, does a really great job here. The hole is actually really well set uh, by McCune on the left side here. So he gets inside leverage here as Bredesen is killing this guy. And then Hayes does a really good job getting to the second level on this linebacker. So outside of that, all on the play side, you can see this hole is really filling up nicely. Um, Michigan didn't really adjust to the common scrape exchanges here. It, it sets them up, up well. I think they should have adjusted by having seven arc block here, turn this into kind of like a split zone. I think it would be for him picking up 43. And that creates a really nice lane here, punishes this scrape exchange player. Uh, unfortunately, he's still on the arc block to the outside. That leaves 43 for first contact and the play is over. Here's Bredesen demolishing his guy. So good blocking all around. They just got uh, they just got beat by the, the play call from Army. McCaffrey snaps it. They hand it off. Charbonnet. Same exact arc zone read as last time. So the action again is to Charbonnet here. Otherwise, a keep to the outside with an arc read block out of Eubanks. Um, I won't even point out the numbers because it's kind of irrelevant here. Army knows what's coming. They send this blitz out of this corner to go straight at McCaffrey, forcing a give. Uh, you have same kind of action down the line. This outside linebacker, outside linebacker, excuse me, is crashing down while this linebacker scrape exchanges to the side. Other relevant players here are the safety who comes crashing down and this linebacker who flows to the play. Both of these guys are the dudes who blow it up. Meanwhile, look at your wide receivers out here. Um, maybe throw a uh, screen pass to 
Um, Nico Collins, have Treek Black go out and block and get probably at least 10 yards, if not a touchdown. But nope. So let's watch the madness that happens here. Um, McCaffrey is staring at a doomed read here. So this is by far doomed. He has to give. Meanwhile, Eubanks is going out to block no one on his arc read. Uh, McCune has to deal with this guy uh, right here, the outside linebacker on the edge who's crashing inside. That leaves this linebacker completely free. This linebacker is no one uh, against him and this safety. So then you have three versus one with uh, Charbonnet looking at a whole bunch of nothing here. This is the only real path, and he has three guys to meet him there. So doomed read, uh, terrible call all around. All around. Uh, you had options, and Charbonnet just runs into nothing good here. So that sucks. Patterson. Play fit underneath. RPO slant here for Michigan. Uh, Charbonnet is one option to the inside. Otherwise, uh, you have Tariq Black here on this uh, slant route. You also have a slant on the outside and this little flat route from Ronnie Bell. But this is who uh, we're looking to pass to here. Michigan's got one, two, three, four, five, six here for blocking uh, on the possible run give. Uh, you have these five in the box that Michigan's accounting for in blocking. That leaves this one outside gent on the line of scrimmage as your conflict player. This is who Patterson will be reading to determine whether uh, he you know, drops back into the slant area or if he stays home or comes down the line for run support. Uh, based off of that, they'll determine whether we throw to black or not on this slant. So reading... Uh, this sort of action he's staying home that should conceivably open up this slant and the correct read from Patterson there to actually throw it so no issues here on the read um, I think the throw is late I think right now he should be throwing he should be throwing to this area this defensive back is not a threat this guy is only now reacting to the pass if you throw this inside here kind of force black to instead of this route kind of throw it a little more inside to get him away from the safety instead he throws and kind of puts him a little bit in danger from that safety given how close we are to the goal line here so i'm not a big fan there but it is the correct read again if he's throwing now he has a lot more area to throw to he waits a beat and now there's only one area to throw to, and that's right here between these defenders. Luckily, he picks up a defensive pass interference. Uh, a little risky, though. 